Born January 21st, 1854 in Bari, Providence, Italy, Giuseppe Palandino is one of the more controversial mediums. Of course, one might argue that all are controversial. But before we delve too deep into her career, it's important to first examine her formative years, and how she came to be such a notable figure in the history of spirituality. Having lost her mother at birth and father aged 12, her mediumship began to manifest age 14. She learnt of her powers purely by accident when she went to stay with friends, and a table suddenly started to levitate. This was accompanied by the chair starting to shake, and the curtains billowing at great speed. Her friends figured out it was only ever occurring around Euspia, and so concluded she must be a powerful medium. Interestingly, Euspia wasn't all that interested in what she could do, and only did it to entertain her friends upon their request. However, she continued to practice and her powers continued to appear to grow, and by 1891 she came to the attention of Professor Labroso, who wanted to see what the fuss was all about. Labroso was a skeptic, but after seeing what she could do, said, I am filled with confusion and regret that I combated with so much persistence the possibility of spirituality. His positive endorsement led to further inquiries from scientific minds across the globe, taking her to perform in Paris, Romania, the United States, and Geneva. However, not all reports were so glowing. Her fraud was so clever that it must have needed long practice to bring it to its present level of skill. She cheated in La Guelas, and she cheated in New York. And yet, each time that she was caught cheating, the spiritualists upheld her, excused her, and forgave her. Truly, their logic sometimes borders on the humorous. But perhaps no report was more damning than when Euspia came to Cambridge, England in 1895, to be tested by the Society of Psychic Research. Her tricks were usually childish, long hairs attached to small objects in order to produce telekinetic movements, the gradual substitution of one hand for two when being controlled by sitters, the production of phenomena with a foot which had been surreptitiously removed from its shoe, and so on. The Society of Psychic Research concluded Palandinian's mediumship was now permanently discredited, and because of her fraud, she was banned from any further experiments within the SPR in Britain. A great deal has been written on both sides in the acute controversy that followed, but it's enough to say that some observers refused to accept this verdict on Euspia, and they roundly condemned the methods adopted by the Cambridge group of experimenters. But as for Euspia, Interestingly, she was very open to the fact that sometimes she did on occasion pull these tricks. You see, it is like this. Some people are at the table who expect tricks. In fact, they want them. I am in a trance, nothing happens, they get impatient. They think of the tricks, nothing but the tricks. They put their mind on the tricks, and I automatically respond. But it is not often, they merely want me to do them. That is all. However, she continued to attract interest across Europe, and spent the next 13 years being tested by group after group of scientific inquiries. But this time around, she was seemingly far more successful with her tests. As a result of the continued positive endorsement, the Society for Psychic Research decided to investigate the medium once more. They nominated three of its most capable skeptics. One of these, Dr. Hewitt Carrington, who had witnessed countless seances, would say that until he met Euspia, I had never seen one single manifestation of the physical order which I could consider genuine. At first glance, the record of the three investigators seemed a crushing blow to the assumptions of the spiritualists. However, in the investigation of Euspia Palandino, this trio of skeptics met their Waterloo. 
for as Cass Carrington later remarked, I think that not only is the spiritualistic hypothesis justified as a working theory, but it is, in fact, the only one capable of rationally explaining the facts. But this victory would be a bittersweet one, for even though she had received a level of endorsement from the Society of Psychic Research, her career had been far too marred with accusations of trickery for her to ever truly be a real contender for a true possible medium. However, she still is a notable driver of the movement, and if nothing else, for an uneducated woman, she sure managed to keep some very educated men trying to disprove her for a very, very long time. <laughs>